नमस्ते सभी को नमस्ते नमस्ते गणेश जी नमस्ते शल वी कंटिन्यू विद क्यू एन ए लेक्चर नंबर फिफ्टीन अबाउट रिस्पेक्ट Yes, welcome everybody. When we are talking about right evaluation, what are we evaluating? When we normally talk of evaluation, we do evaluation of a skill for something, so to solve the problem or in a certain subject. So here, when we say right evaluation, what exactly are we evaluating? See, we have defined this very clearly. that when we are saying respect we mean the right evaluation of human being and when we are doing the right evaluation we said that first three thing that we are evaluating is the purpose the program and the potential so purpose of a human being which is continuous happiness and prosperity and which is same for all of us then program to ensure continuity of happiness that is to understand the harmony and to live in harmony same similar for all of us and potential potential in terms of our activities of desire thought and expectation which is going on continuously in each one of us and our natural acceptance which is intact you know and which is innate in every one of us so these are the first three things that we are evaluating the purpose the program the potential and at that level we are all similar right and that is what we are emphasizing again and again that this is what we must be able to evaluate and accept right that that everyone is similar one is similar to me so this is first three things that we are evaluating and there we are similar the fourth thing that we are evaluating is our competence right and this competence is what we have been talking about you know is what we are you know what we are in terms of our imagination in terms of our desire thought and expectation in terms of accumulation of all this you know desire thought and expectation over time right this competence may be different but what we are saying you know n times that let us first see that the purpose program and potential for every one of us is similar and therefore we are similar so let us have this acceptance that everyone is like me with this clarity that everyone is like me in terms of purpose program and potential right now we evaluate the competence competence in terms of what we are right what is our desire thought and expectations right and there there may be difference in the competence of people but with this first three parts you know seeing that similarity there we are not able, now able to accept the other you know as a human being with you know or human being like me and with that we are now you know studying the competence and we can see the difference in competence but now this competence is used for the purpose of complementarity and not for the purpose of differentiation or discrimination so this is what we are saying now when it comes to skill skill is a part of the competence so i have many skills you know which has to do with behavior with work with participation in the larger order you know, all that will be included in the competence so what we call a skill today right which is largely connected with the you know skill for handling the world you know the physical world around which is okay which is a part of this competence so this is what we are evaluating i am a little bit confused because on the one hand we are saying that we are similar so then it sounds like it is something uh, that is very absolute but then and on the other hand we are saying we are also different so now here we are again comparing so again yeah. comparison comes in true true 
See these first three things, purpose, program, and potential is something absolute. We can understand it, mm. we can evaluate it, right? and we find that it is similar for all of us. So this is absolute. When it comes to competence, different people have different competence. That is also true. Right? But when you are evaluating the competence, what is the basis for evaluation? So the basis for evaluation is our potential. And what is this potential? We have this natural acceptance, which is innate in all of us, which is invariant, which is universal in nature. Now, what we have to do is that we have to ensure that all our desire, thought, and expectation you know, is in line with this <coughs> natural acceptance. That is basically the competence. That is basically the competence. So when it comes to competence, it may be different. But the yardstick that we are using for evaluating the competence, that is absolute. If okay. you look at this diagram on the left side, okay, this whole height of this you know, block is same and that is our potential. We might have realized a part of it. That is our competence. And this competence may be different for different people. But this yardstick is something very definite, something very absolute. Right. The unfortunate thing today is that we are not able to realize that we as human beings have same purpose, program, and potential. That's the major crisis. And second, even in competence, we are not able to see that the basic reference is definite. The basic reference is the potential that we have to realize in terms of our competence. So we are not able to see even that. As a result, what has happened is that, that we want to become better than the other. But we are not clear about what is the best. Mm -hmm. Right. So now there is no reference point that has become the problem. For example, if you can understand this, you know, need for physical facility, and if you can have this feeling of having more than the required physical facility, then this prosperity, which is defined on the basis of this feeling, right, this is something which is definite. And you can see that everyone of us can become prosperous. Every family, every village, every nation can become prosperous. Now, what we have done today is that we are saying we should have more physical resource than the other. Okay. Mm. This is becoming relative. You know, now there is no reference point. You are lost. Yes. So you make a house with 20 rooms and you think, you know, it is bigger than my neighbor's room, your neighbor's house. And then your neighbor is excited, you know, with that jealousy which we are talking about. And he wants to make a bigger house. So you make a house with 40 rooms and your house is lost now. It is no worth for you now. <laughs> this is the problem. Mm. Yes, we have people you know, our families which have four members, three members, two members, and they have a house which can accommodate 20 people, right? Still, they don't have this feeling of prosperity. They are looking, you know, into the house of the neighbor <laughs> yeah, and feeling that their house is no worth. That is the problem of becoming relative with no absolute reference, with no definite reference. So competence may be different, yes, true, but at least there has to be an, you know basic reference, which is definite, which is not there today. Mm. So I keep telling this, you know, 
let's say you need four pairs of clothes in a season you know and there are four seasons in this country or three seasons in this country so you need 12 pairs or 16 pairs of clothes now there is some basic reference at least and you can see that yes if you have more than 16 pairs of clothes that you have more than what is required now whether the other person has 500 or 600 or 1000 or 10000 it does not matter for me i have more than what is required and do we have some definite reference like that or we think that the other person has 10000 you know sarees i must have you know 20000 or at least 10000 plus one whether I would never be able to bear it, wear it or not, I'm not bothered. <clears throat> so I keep quoting this example of this president, you know, uh, what is that country, Philippines or something. Imelda Marcos. <laughs> yeah, Marcos, this lady was the president and there was a coup in that country and then she had to run away. So she ran away with seven planes of her, you know, belongings. And it seems that she has some 30,000, you know, pairs of shoes and chapels with her. Now just imagine, you go on accumulating without any basic reference. So yes, competence is different for different people, but there has to be an absolute reference, a definite, you know, reference on the basis of which it is comparing has to be made whether your competence is up to date or not, whether the competence of the other is up to date or not, what we can do about it. Yes. Hmm. So as part of the evaluation, we are comparing also. Yes. We are certainly comparing, but there is some basic reference for evaluation. Yes. yes. But this is one thing. Second thing we are saying, that when we are making this comparing, right, it is to define complementarity and not for, you know, creating jealousy and competition. Mm. It is to define cooperation. So if I can speak good English, Hindi and you can speak good English, then this is not a matter of competition and jealousy. It is a matter of being helpful to each other, you know, defining the complementarity. So if I have to communicate with large number of people, then I will communicate in Hindi with those who know Hindi. But if I do not know English and there are a set of people who do know English, then I can define my complementarity with you, that you know English better. So you can communicate with them in English and I can communicate with them in Hindi. And then we two together will be able to serve the purpose. Mm. So this evaluation of the competence and the difference in competence can be, you know, <coughs> rightly utilized for complementarity, for fulfillment of the overall purpose, isn't it? Yes, yes. Today, all this comparison is made to differentiate, to discriminate. Mm. I mean, no, I would should not say all, but the predominance is this, that by this you want to prove that you are better than the other and different than the other, not that you are complementary to the other. So now, when I make this right evaluation, how do I know that my evaluation is right? How will I find out? See, we have just said that you know, what we are evaluating. Okay. So if we are evaluating correctly, then first we are making the evaluation of purpose, program and potential, which are similar. Mm -hmm. So are we able to accept people as similar? That is one check. Mm. Then we are also evaluating the competence, mm. right? Which may be different, and which we can, you know, evaluate for defining our mutual complementarity. 
So are we doing that? That when we are evaluating this competence, our own competence or competence of the other, and we find that there is difference, are we able to define complementarity? If this is there, then yes. The first thing that we are able to see the other people as similar to us, right, at the level of purpose, program, and potential. And at the level of competence, they are different, but we are able to define our mutual complementarity. If we are able to do this, then it is a right evaluation. Right. On the other hand, if we are making the evaluation of competence only without seeing the first three things, and on the basis of this difference in competence, we are trying to differentiate and discriminate right, with other people, then it is not a right evaluation. So very simple. But now when we evaluate the skills and all, there are certain benchmarks and we can do it easily. When we are saying competence and uh, it's not just the skill, we are also saying how much of their potential they have realized. Now that is very difficult for me to see. Uh, what is going on inside, I don't know for the other person. But see, the point is that, of course, there are many things, you know, which cannot be quantified, true. But if we look at it in a this, you know, in this broad perspective, <clears throat> then if you want, you can even design this manner, you know, kind of uh, quantified things under this. I mean, let's take this, you know, broadly. The competence, when you are talking about competence, there is this issue of skill for behavior. There is this skill for work. There is this skill for participation in the larger order, in the family, in society, you know, in the village, in the town, in the state, in the nation, in the whole world. Now, all these skills can be part of this competence, right? Mm. So we might define these things in more details and also quantify many things. It is true that we are we cannot quantify, you know everything because when you're talking about understanding and when you're talking about you know uh, feelings they are not quantitative things they are qualitative in nature mm. right so when we are working about this consciousness yes things are all there which are quali qualitative but they are definite we can talk about them at the level of consciousness we can understand we can you know, see, we can evaluate. But what do you mean by saying that, you know, we have this yardstick, you generally mean the call, you know, in terms of quantification, can mm. be quantified. Mm. I'm saying that, yes, certain things can still be quantified. For example, my behavior, which is an indicator of my feeling, right? Mm. Now I can quantify whether my behavior is leading to mutual fulfillment for others or not. So I can ask this question, how many people are feeling assured of me, of my behavior? This can be a quantified indicator. So this, you know, uh, people in Bhutan, when they are trying to measure this DNH, right? Mm -hmm. They are saying that there can be different ways of it. One possible way is that how many you know people you are feel related to you in a fulfilling manner? Similarly, if you are in travel, how many people you can rely on? So this <clears throat> you know can be a quantified measure, but this quantified measure can only be an indicator of the feeling. So we can do that. We can define for behavior. We can define a skill for participation in the larger order over and above defining the skill for work. 
so what we are saying that this accumulated imagination is this i mean competence is accumulated imagination that is collection of desire thought and expectation and this skill is a part of it not all of it so right evaluation of competence would mean evaluation of how much of this imagination is motivated by by my natural acceptance and it evaluates it includes this evaluation of skill related to work so this competence will include number one level of understanding then behavioral competence then competence to work right and competence to participate in the larger order okay so first one is level of understanding and the feeling then 2 3 4 is the expression of that mm. so we are trying to evaluate all this and all this is important because they all matter to us you know as a human being as a self and it also matters to others who are in relationship with us both human being as well as the rest of nature is it making sense yes yes it is so at least we have to have this broad based understanding of competence and then we should work out what part of it can be quantified what can part of it cannot be quantified so even that part which can be quantified will be much more than what we are doing today so even though we may understand and we may respect others you know like if i see so many times students we respect them even if they don't wish we only wish them good morning still they don't reply they don't respond uh, so here uh, even though we are doing the right thing they are not responding and uh, so now we are only getting disrespected each time so what to do then the what we said just now you know <clears throat> we have to develop the competence for behavior competence for work competence for participation in the larger order the problem today is that we are not developing the competence of behavior in the students we are only focusing on some aspects of competence related to the skills of work so this is pro uh, we are not developing the competence of behavior we are not developing this is the main problem and this is the problem of the whole system of education today as we have been mentioning right from the first sec session of you know that right understanding and relationship are also important rather than rather more important than the physical facility if you remember the first session only we said three things are required right understanding right feeling you know relationship and physical facility and this first two the right understanding and this relationship is more important than the physical facility in terms of priority but our education is only focused around physical facility and this is the result the teachers who have tried to work on the first two have found that the students not only start responding to them but they respect these teachers even touch their feet so this is the experience of you know this up technical university when this course was introduced right and many teachers who you know kind of took this seriously and were working on it you know on their own self and in their behavior this is the change which is very clearly observed many teachers made this comment that you know these students are so notorious you know they don't even wish us but they teach they you know touch your feet that is the response for many teachers you pity and it would be same everywhere i would say 
So we do not have that skill of behavior ourselves. We are not teaching this skill of behavior to the children, right? And then we expect them to have a good behavior. But this is not problem with us only. This is the problem with the whole education system. This is the problem with whole education system today. So we have to seriously look into it. And if we are able to develop this competence of behavior in them, they will behave properly. They will behave properly. So See, this, this is, is what we are saying, that we have complaints, right? Mm -hmm. We have complaints over things that are happening. But we are not able to understand what is the basic reason, number one. Number two, are we also a part of this problem? If we can look at these two, then we can see that, yes, the problem is there in general. We are part of the problem. We are accentuating the problem. So at least we can be a solution. We can start with ourselves. So I didn't look at it like this. So now I think I need to see this fresh, like, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't feel good for me to be part of the problem. Uh, maybe I have to see, uh, perhaps I am also not doing the right thing. I mean, I take this morning session is a very good example, right? There are now more than 100 people attending this session whom I have never met, you know, we have not met each other. And many of you would not have met them. Right? They have joined through we have this you know, online sessions, right? And they are coming and joining at 5.30 in the morning or even earlier, right? And they are very senior professors, not, you know, even the students. Right? So they come in time, they join, they ask questions, you know, and we are not giving very pleasing answers to them. Still, they listen, right? Now, what more respect do you want? What more respect do we want? People getting up at five, five o'clock in the morning, attending the session from five thirty to seven thirty, right? <laughs> no external motivation. No certificate is given. No appreciation is given. But they are there, they are attending. So it's not that people don't have respect. They want to have respect. But then we have to inculcate that. We have to make it a part of education. Hmm. And we have to start with ourselves. I mean, it was difficult for us to think that if we conduct a session from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock or 5.30 to 6.30, right, people will come and attend. Mm. But people are coming. <clears throat> we started for 10 days on 6th of June. <laughs> and this session is going on, like, almost more than six months, seven months. Seven months. Yeah. So we should look at that, look at this whole process of human transaction, you know, relationship, behavior. Then we will be able to see that, yes, it is possible. Uh, when we talked of uh, disrespect and differentiation, we mentioned that, uh, uh, you know, whether we are proposing to children or imposing on them, but when children are small, they don't know what is right for them. So we do impose on them. So is that wrong? We will look into the details, you know, of this process of education. Okay. When we are talking about this harmony in society, and there we are, uh, you know, talking about the different systems which are important you know, 
to fulfill the goal of the society and education system is one of them so we'll talk about that in detail and there we will see i mean i can just place the basic thing that is in context of your question the basic thing that we find there is that you know as the children grow they have different kind of mode of learning and understanding and accepting so they start with imitation then we then they go to this following things then they take you know guidance a kind of instruction from you and want to work then at one point they want that you give them the basic rules which they have to follow rather than giving all the finer details right so that is what we are calling as discipline and after an age they don't want even that you know they want you to give them the basic principle which they can verify themselves and in the process if they have question you should be able to respond to them so that is what we are calling as self exploration right mm -hmm. so this process this is you know process we have to understand that the child will go through this process of imitation to following to discipline to self discipline and if we can understand that then we can define our whole process right of education but in this whole process what we have to do is facilitating the child rather than imposing upon the child mm. yes this is what we are saying facilitate the child rather than impose upon the child right and <clears throat> it is also good that while you are facilitating the child for imitation and for following and things like that if you can keep this process of self exploration open to the child right it is good right because any time he wants to verify things for himself we should be able to help him rather than telling him that you don't you know ask question you take what i am saying or do what i am saying hmm. the child will do that imitation even otherwise you know that's very natural process but if he is asking a question on what you are saying we should be able to help him to explore and see for himself yes so two things i would say one it has to be a facilitation in the process and not imposition number 2 keep this you know this process of self exploration open even to the young children that will be more helpful okay for small children okay i can see that they will not understand but for older people like i if i see in the house you know i am doing so much work in the house also i look after my child also i am working in the house also i am working outside the house also in spite of all this if my husband doesn't respect me or if my mother in law doesn't respect me then i do feel bad uh, i don't feel like respecting them i think that is natural yeah it it looks natural and i mean number one you will feel bad that is true because you are not treated with respect even when you are not doing something you expect these people to treat with respect treat you with respect now that you are doing so many things you certainly have expectation that people should treat you with respect mm but what we are saying again and again right that given all this condition okay how do we go about it what is right to do for example i would say that if you are not feeling good you are feeling bad then how do you respond to this 
mm. by disrespecting them and if you do that will it work no it doesn't work <laughs> yes so this we should be very clear that they are making a mistake right and i am dissatisfied if i make the same mistake it will not work mm. now with whatever we have studied till now we can see that they themselves are in crisis if you are if they are not able to see you with respect and treat you with respect that means that they do not have this feeling of respect in themselves right so when they don't have the right feeling in themselves they are <laughs> themselves are in crisis right they don't appear to be in crisis when they shout at me <laughs> yes <laughs> this is what we were been asking you know this mother when does the mother shout at the child when she is comfortable within or uncomfortable within mm. right yes so this capacity we have to develop to see that they are in crisis not that they are kings and you know they are dominating on us so this man who is treating me with disrespect is not having this feeling of respect in himself right and therefore he is in contradiction within in a state of unhappiness within okay so this we should be able to see that these people who are shouting or who are disrespecting misbehaving they are already in crisis so i am not going to react to it i am going to respond to it that only will solve the problem so that is tough then ultimately uh, responsibility comes back to me only yes so responsibility comes back to you and then what you have to do so if you want to help them develop these feelings right mm. in order to do this you have to ensure right understanding and right feeling in yourself first mm. with this you will be able to create assurance in them with your consistent behavior and that will create a space for a dialogue right and this we have discussed in detail before also mm. but let me uh, re emphasize this that the problem is that i think that i am not reacting but in between i keep reacting mm. so if you are thinking of disrespecting them inside sometime it will come outside <laughs> so my behavior is not very consistent also true so they will not remember their misbehavior they will remember your misbehavior <laughs> so this is what is happening everybody is misbehaving and everybody is you know remembering the misbehavior of the other so nobody is taking the responsibility and everybody is blaming blaming the other person the question is where do we begin what we are saying is that we can begin with ourselves and that will be you know good for us it will give us happiness within for ourselves so at least there we can start isn't it mm. so that would be about the home and i can take i need to take responsibility in that now when we say uh, don't differentiate even outside the home how can my behavior be the same for everybody like uh, my behavior with my boss will definitely be different to my behavior with the class 4 employees there you know the people the janitor the sweeper uh, the security guard those kind of people so uh, how can we say not to differentiate 
what we are saying is number one are we able to see them as similar to us okay, at the level of purpose program and potentials and are we able to see them you know treat them accordingly that is important we are, if we are able to see that you know they are all you know same or similar at the level of purpose program and potential as i am then i will have that you know feeling of respect for them at this level with this feeling of respect for them and you know my behavior accordingly now i look at this competence and based on the basis of this competence i am defining my complementarity so which i can do much better than what i am doing now so even if there is an acceptance at the level of this purpose program and potential being similar then your behavior will change significantly your behavior will change significantly and this we tried it out you know one of the example which i can quote is you know in triple it hyderabad we worked on this from 2005 to 2009 you know very extensively with 180 students and with around 50 teachers and there were a lot of changes you know in the activity of triple it but at one point of time some of this you know uh, uh, housekeeping staff who uh, were overhearing this because they have to manage many of the things in the workshop so they are there around they found it interesting and they said that we should do some workshop for the you know uh, this housekeeping staff with their family and some of the uh, you know faculty wives they volunteered to conduct this workshop for them and then a series of workshop was conducted uh, you now were conducted for this housekeeping staff and to our surprise the significant change in the culture of triple it took place after this you know these workshops were conducted for the house staff and they became a part of the process so they make so much of influence on the culture of the institution and we think that they are sweepers you know they are cleaners you know the pews we don't have to you know care for them but it made all the difference i mean so much so that the students used to have this culture function once in a year big culture function that you know now almost every college professional college has that and in that call that function they used to call some celebrity paying a huge amount so after this uh, housekeeping staff workshop were conducted and they became very familiar you know the students with this staff and their family the next function they decided that we will train and orient this children of the housekeeping staff and take their performance as the main you know performance of the function right rather than calling these celebrities and this made so much of difference you know the behavior of the students with the housekeeping staff and vice versa you know their sense of responsibility you know of the housekeeping staff you know growing with this change in the behavior so it made so much of difference so it is not that you know you are not giving them this responsibility of cleaning they are cleaning still cleaning your bathroom and cleaning your floor and all that but then your behavior is very different behavior is very different 
And one of the very simple experiment which was conducted and testing things, you know, this you can you know, try working on it, you know, different possibilities. So one of the experiment was that this assignment was given to the students that one day you have to go and clean the room of your friend. So you fix up, take time, go there, clean his room and write down your experience. Right. Very interesting, you know, uh, kind of experience uh, were reported. Very interesting. So one of the boy was saying that, you know, I went to clean the room and this friend of mine, he was sitting in the room, right, and studying and he did not cooperate. So when I had to clean under the table, you know, which on which he was, you know, studying, he just raised his, you know, shoes, legs, and you know, and allowed me to clean. And I felt so insulted. I thought that you know, now that I'm cleaning his room, he should at least, you know, facilitate me okay. by going out for five minutes. Now, this is very important. Now that you realize that this is what we are doing to the sweeper, at least we will start cooperating with them. I should have cleaned my room myself. Somebody else is doing it for me. That itself is an issue. But now that he is doing, I can at least, you know, treat him with respect, at least cooperate with him. That is okay, but you know, like when we are saying that we have, our behavior will be the same, like with the boss and with the sweeper. So, I mean, I might call my boss uh, to lunch and have him sit at our dining table and eat, but I will not do that for the sweeper. I mean, this is what I'm saying. Why not? <laughs> I mean, they are not clean, so ask them to get clean first and then come. <laughs> <laughs> what is, see, what is the issue? Just because they are sweeping, they don't deserve or they are not clean, you know, so you would not like that. So you ask them to you know, clean their, themselves and come. See, this is what we are doing. We are discriminating, okay, and then we are feeling the burnt of it. So this pupil sitting outside the director's room, if you ask him who does more work, the pupil will say that I am certainly doing more work because this man cannot even take his glass of water. <laughs> if he wants to drink a glass of water, he will ring this bell ten times. And if I am little late, he will shout at me. So he's just sitting there and, uh, and giving orders. This is the feeling we are generating. So this is important. So what we are saying that we should, we can treat them similar. We, there may be some problem which we have to resolve. So what is happening is that you are treating the sweeper with that differentiation and your boss is treating you with that differentiation. Yes. Right. And you are not happy with that treatment by the boss, but you are giving the same treatment to your subordinates. Mm. This is what I'm saying. The whole system today now, there are certain very basic problems because it is there in the very basic formulation of the system. So major part of the system that we are running today is decide, you know, was developed under this, you know, domination. Right? In the process of colonization, the Britishers 
wanted to dominate over the people in this country. So they designed this system where this domination was at the core and not relationship. And we are carrying it without understanding, without evaluating it. Yes, we can stop here and we can continue tomorrow morning then. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much.